Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Weapon with Kate Ritchie. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Thanks. Um, Thanks, mate. Welcome. Welcome Little boy helping with the delivery. Is that it? Is that what we're talking about? Oh, no, no, no. I think when you read it from the page, it can be very confusing. Mm. A child did not deliver a baby. No. um, But a child did help out mum. We want to talk about hero hero kids. Do you know, I I went to the service station the other day and there was a guy in a wheelchair um, trying to pump up his tyre at the the air pump, right? I went over and said, mate, I'll get that for you. But you're not a child. Pumped up his tyre, but I wasn't. A child once, so um, yeah. adult childlike hero. Okay, you know what? Hero. I suggest you don't call the show, okay. um, or, or you know, with a with a with a story of any kind, and yeah, and don't get too involved. Listen to Fitzy. There goes my hero. See, no, that's just um, we're sort of doing like a song in the background. I thought you were going to say just you pulled up at the fun. servo the other yeah, day, and Jack ran in that's and got you an icy pole, and yep. I mean he was your heroic. Sometimes child. he does if I'm hung over, keeping your sugars oh, up. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's all a bit confusing, but it will. make Makes sense when you listen to the podcast. You're my zero, okay? Oh, sorry, hero. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. There's a few people upset in the uh, free-to-air industry at the moment, free-to-air television. And obviously, Channel 7 have axed quite a few people in their stable. Channel 9 as well. I know the journalists are protesting at the moment. They weren't happy that... Channel 9 th- flew Scotty Cam over to Paris to promote the block. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Just some French ins- inspiration. I mean, <laughs> Shana Blaze, all her new interiors will be uh, Parisian inspired. <laughs> um, but you know what? Like, I mean, at Channel 7, there are. It is sad because there are bit, there's people that have been there for decades, right? Yep. So this yeah, is, is a. Weatherman up in Queensland, his name is Paul Burt, Channel 7 star, 51 years of age. He's got told, Bertie, we don't need you anymore. So this was his last, his final cross the other night. Have a listen to the little dig at the end of it. And Bertie, we can't let you go tonight without thanking you for your passionate weather reporting over the past decade and a bit. I've loved your energy and our laughs and on behalf of the entire news team. I'm, and I'm sure all of the viewers, I'd like to wish you all the best for your next chapter. Absolutely there, Sam. And uh, just uh, yeah, straight from the cuff, as I do my weather, it's generally not scripted, I can tell you. But what we do is I want to thank everyone at home for allowing me into your living rooms over the past 28 years across all networks. And thank you again. I want to thank my family. I love you guys for supporting me. And of course, uh, hey, we're going to roll into a bit of a package now. If I had the opportunity, I wouldn't have wanted to go this way. That's what happens when you get sacked. That's what happens when you get sacked. And then they... Then they... (laughs) And then they go into a package with This Is The Music. Everywhere you go, always take, take it with you, mate. With you. Everywhere, you go, <laughs> grab it. Everywhere you go. Grab your coat and grab the weather and off you go. It's, a, it's, it's not a, fair. It's a dog act, isn't it? Isn't it? It is. I, it is. And you, but you know what? I, I This is what I love about more uh, live radio and live television is that you can... People can do this kind of stuff and go and go out with a bang. Well, you've got the chance to, don't make, you? Make a statement. Yeah. There was an Alaskan reporter over in Alaska, and they were trying to legalise marijuana over there. And this this reporter was actually quite conflicted because she was the owner of a a, uh, a medicinal cannabis company. Yeah. And they couldn't get it over the line, so she couldn't get her company over the line. So she decided she wanted to focus on that fight a little bit more and get rid of her job live on air. Awesome. Now, everything you heard is why I, the actual owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, will be dedicating all of my energy toward fighting for freedom and fairness, which begins with legalizing marijuana here in Alaska. And as for this job, well, not that I have a choice, but f*** it. I quit. (laughs) And she just walked. All right, we apologize for that. (laughs) We'll We'll be right back. I love that the business is called a club too. Just makes it sound like everyone's got a membership. Turn, turn up with a big spliff and you're welcome in the door. Or this one. Um, this was Fox 5 in New York, okay. right? So this is Jim Ryan. Was There was a, a dispute between landlords and tenants yep. in this building. This building. So you're going to hear, you'll hear the host of the show throwing to Jim Ryan, who's doing the reporting on the fly. And he's not happy with the way that he's interviewed the people there and they start having a bit of a Barney on air. 
gentleman's a very effective spokesperson for the for the company, but uh, obviously the people who live there are not satisfied with his explanation. Right. So what do you want now? Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, Ali, I'll do that later. Oh, why don't you do that later, Jim? Uh, I think the lady expressed herself, and uh, you're not here, you're there. Would, is there any question you'd like me to ask her? And no, I, I, I'll, I'll give you lessons on how to become a reporter but later I'll on. give you some lessons on how to be an editor, because I was your boss once. Yeah, you were, <laughs> and are no longer. How did that happen? Uh, well, I don't Here's know. Here's Aaron and Sounds like that had been building for a while, doesn't it? Ah, oh, that it. What that a is great just moment! Beautiful television. See you later, guys. I'm sacked. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Do you have a hero kid in the car right now? Yeah. Are you off to school? I mean, maybe they are a hero this morning purely because they put their shoes on themselves. Yeah. What you uh, to, so you don't mean lifesaver? To an well, extent of well, I do, I do mean lifesaver. But I mean, we should all give ourselves pats on the back yep. for great things getting out the door this morning. But this is a this is a real life saving um, child, and I want to hear from you this morning, thirteen, twenty four, ten. Perhaps if your kid has saved your life or has done something heroic, this is an incredible story. Um, a vid- this video has come out, and Mum has obviously uh, ordered something on Amazon. Yep, and you know there's. So, there are so many, so many deliveries these days that sometimes the delivery guys and women they don't even come to the front door. They just throw it over the back fence, yeah. and it, it never really gets to where you, where you need it to be. On this occasion, the Amazon driver has come to the front gate. This is in Belfast, in Ireland, um, and after delivering the package to the young six-year-old boy. Not only has the little kid had the nous to to ask the Amazon driver for help, but the am- the driver, the delivery person, mm-hmm. has had the time for the kid. And I think there's a lesson in that for all of us. There's a little bit of audio here where the boy has asked for help for his mum, who's inside and not well. Excuse me. Thank you. Can you help me, mum? Oh. Yes. Can you help her? Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Yes, yes. And there's two small children here. Are you in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm delivering that. The two children asked me to come in. It's a bit hard to hear. What happened? Well, it, well it, it, he just asked for help. Yeah, I know, but what's happened to Mum? Oh, well, she's fainted oh. I- inside. So, it, uh, I mean, I wasn't going to tell too wow. heavy a story at this time. If I can, if I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. She'd suffered an episode of postural, orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Yeah, that's the one. Would that be oh, right? It's caused that's... her heart rate to spike. Yep. Um, it's caused her to faint. So she's out to it. The little boy has gone to get the package at the front gate. Mm-hmm. The, I didn't even know there was another kid inside, a smaller child. Yeah. And he's asked for help and said, "Can you help out How mom? calm he was as well. Can you help can my you, mum? Can you help my mum? Well, I think he'd already inside yeah. given her a blanket. I mean, what a... The, the lovely amazing. little boy, little a blanket and a, and a bucket because she's obviously said I'm not feeling well before she's fainted yeah. and he's tried to do everything he can oh. and then it was all in the timing. Oh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just trying to think what your kids would do if you did pass out because this is the thing. Oh, that, obviously, that freaks them out. It freaks us out when we see someone pass out. But mm. what what uh, what's going to be your first reaction from your children? When you are laying on the ground and they don't know what to do. I think they'd go and play Fortnite. No, they um, wouldn't. Well, you'd like to think that they know to well, use the phone. Yeah. That they can make an emergency call. Yeah, quick. Emergency. Maybe that, he's played 20 minutes of Fortnite and then been and then interrupted decided. by the delivery yeah. driver. I, um, well, Lisa would get the kids just to sign a contract while you're laying down on the ground, I suppose, yeah. or a will. Just the will. Just find, quick, find get your him, Bitcoin. Just grab his <laughs> hand. <laughs> grab his hand. No, right hand. Yep, right hand. And just scribble on here. That's it. <laughs> scribble. Oh, Daddy. Are you okay? <laughs> okay, kids, get back from him. We can't help him at all. He needs to go now. <laughs> Clear. Quick, don't call any ambulance. Cancel it immediately. Bless his little heart, though. I think he's he's kept it together until he's got help, and then, of course, the ambulance has arrived and he's had a few tears in yep. the back. So I think there is a, there's a lot of pressure on a poor little, poor little I th- boy. I think we have to, and I think about this all the time, because we, get, we constantly get stuck in into our children. We sp- should have spoken to Dr. Billy Garvey about this because I feel like you're constantly negative with your children. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. But you know what? Whenever we have our boys stay over at another kid's house and have a sleepover, the parents say to us, your child has amazing manners. 
And we're like, oh, seriously? Well, why don't they do that with us at yeah. home? Yeah. yeah. But in a situation like this, Tommy, I suppose we work on commercial radio. Can we get you to pass out or something and, and test our children oh, maybe in this? yeah, I love that. Or just test us. Let's yeah. see which one of the, oh, the team would bother to call <laughs> triple zero. Yes. Well, if, I mean, if you've seen the footage online where I, Kate kicked me in the face yesterday, you'll notice that there was no oh, emergency yeah. or yeah. medical services provided to are an injured staff Are we going to get to that? I can't believe that oh, you've yeah, kept so yes, quiet oh, about Oh, we're getting to that, Kate your, Ritchie. Your old oh, injury. Yeah. And if you stick around after 8, 8.30 today, I'm going to kick him in the face. <laughs> next, so. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Let's talk about this extraordinary story. Uh, his name's Drew, and unfortunately, Drew, on his 23rd birthday in 2017, he had a bit of a fall off his motorcycle. Mm. A serious crash which sent him into a deep coma. They are very dangerous things. No, oh no protection, God. mate. That's no. what old man used to say. But don't bloody get on those two wheelers, mate. No protection. So mm. true. So Best thing your dad's ever said. Um, the thing was, he got sent into a coma, and he was... To the point of, should we switch off life support? The doctor spoke to his mother about donating the organs. Oh, they're full-on conversations. Aren't they? Have. Mum, was, t- was he a musician, was he? Huh? No, to, to, oh, to he's, um, right, harvest his organs. organs. Sorry. Yeah, so different. Quite a Sorry. good one. I mean, no, heavy for this so time of the morning. Very heavy on good. such a serious topic, but I'll... Um, of course. Um, the mum turned around and said, you will not take an eyelash or a fingernail from my son because with the power of the Lord, my son will rise again. Big words I don't from mum. she mom. said that. I don't think she said that. Um, that was her quote. <laughs> 244 days later, when the doctors insisted, this man drew, he has no chance. Absolutely no chance. He was lying there, rolled over and said, I'm okay. I love you, Mum. What? Mum knew the Lord had shone down. Shone down? Yeah. Is that the right word? Is that a word? Look, shone? Look down upon us. The, lo- the Lord shone. had looked down upon us and said, rise, Drew. Rise from your bed. The doctor said, that's fine, he's woken up. But of course... You didn't have to do all the dialogue. The chance... Yeah. You could have just... <laughs> you know, I don't know where, <laughs> where did God... When was God introduced into all this as well? well this is, I'm, I'm giving you the, the detail of the mum's desperation okay. and her belief and hope her for why her faith. son may once rise again. Drew was told he would never walk again. He was wheelchaired out of hospital, had rehab at home... Mm. Step by step, inch by inch, he was able to walk again. That's amazing. Yeah, 244. Yeah, 244 oh. days in a coma where what's, they said you will not survive. That, what's that, almost eight months or something? And so, I'm going to have to come back to this, but sure. the name Drew yeah. discuss. Oh, um, come on. His mum's name's, y- his mum's name's Yolanda. <laughs> Hello, Yolanda. Um, here's the thing. Um, what's the first question you ask after 244 days in, the, in, a, in a coma? Why did, you ride the, the, why did you ride the motorbike? What's for lunch? Did Molly, oh, you mean, uh, no. you mean who's, which, who, do no. you ask them or they ask you? No, the, he, what's his first question? Who's on top of the ladder? Yep. Who's winning the NRO? Who won the Origin? Yeah. He'd, he'd ask who won Origin, wouldn't he? Was it O'Callaghan or Titmus? <laughs> Anyway, he started to walk again and with his newfound legs, decided to work on his fitness. Now he needed to build some strength. They weren't newfound legs. He always had the legs. I mean, stop it down if you will. He, he found was, some legs. He was told they were hard never gonna rubbish. Eat. Like, Wowee, where'd these come from? Yeah. Well, by the way, how can other people put hard rubbish on our lawn? Side note, hard rubbish in the east at the moment. Um, at 5.30am to work on his fitness, he stepped out the door and unfortunately he was hit by a pickup truck and was killed. No, he wasn't. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the oldest trick in the book. It's true. So he'd gone through everything and he'd worked on himself and he'd built himself up again and the Lord had once again looked down and praised him. The Lord's got nothing to do with it. And said, you will get up and you will walk again. With your newfound legs. Where was the Lord when the pickup truck was arriving and Drew was crossing the road? Did you make that last... Yeah, you made that last bit up. Didn't that that happen in the latest Bond film? The miracle came to a (laughs) heart-wrenching end on Friday when Drew was hit by a pickup truck. I mean, really, if you want. He needs to stay off the road. Well, he's dead now. He's off the road. 
to pick him but up I off the road. Th- I thought he couldn't walk properly. No, like he was only just getting back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He found his feet again, and he was out heading out the door oh, for his first walk. Found his feet to as try well. <laughs> to try and put it in place, and then all of a sudden he's lying down again. That's actually quite a tragic story. What did Mum say then? She said, "I can't believe it. What has the Lord done now?" She said, "He's a bag of tricks, isn't he?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, no. I made that bit up. <laughs> that was oh, no, 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 oh, 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 really? Because I, I was believing up. it. Yeah, I was, I was really on board. Quote then. from the mum: "Isn't he a bag of tricks?" The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I'm still driving. We're on. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's time for sixty second starts. Kate Ritchie, I'm still standing now. I'm still standing. Discover your next Kia at Sydney City Kia, O'Reardon Street, Alexandria. We're in territory we've never been in before. A thousand dollars jackpot! Wow, she's on fire. Oh no! God, I think it's and maybe my, Just, my gold cardigan this morning yeah, it's might a gold give me a bit of a. Are you nervous? Or mustard, I'd say. Or, or mustard. Let's go with the gold. I feel a bit you seem nervous, nervous because the, what I, I actually thought about this after the show yesterday. I'm feeling bad that I'm not giving away the cash. Everybody's needing cash at the moment, but I do love to jackpot. Do you know what? Bianca and Mascot needs this money. Bianca, welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. We've never hit this amount before, Bianca, with I'm Still Standing. What would you do with a beautiful $1,000? Oh, I'd probably pay some bills and then go shopping. Bang. Okay, Good fair idea. enough. Okay. Um, Bianca, you're okay. also in the running for that uh, Kia Sportage SX Hybrid, thanks to Sydney City Woo. Kia. Good luck with that. Bianca, you are our guest. You will be going first if you have the power at the end of 60 seconds. That money is yours. Bianca, your 60 seconds. It starts now. now. What season are we currently in, Bianca? Ooh, winter. Correct. Is Joel Curry British or American? Oh, I'm going to go British? Yep, that is correct. Seven's new reality show is called Made in What? Oh, pass. It's Bondi. Over to Kate. Kate, name a soccer position. Striker. Correct. Which actor just announced his return to the Marvel Universe? I don't know. Too Too long. Robert Downey Jr. Bianca, over to you. What year was Google invented, Bianca? Oh, 1999? No, it's 98. Over to Kate. What is tahini made of? Kate? Sesame seeds. That is correct. Who is the most followed person on Instagram? Um, uh, uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo is correct. Dua Lipa is currently dating which British actor? Poor tough. No, I know this one. Callum... Callum Turner. Turner. Turner, 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 Turner. Michelle Bridges was a trainer on what TV show? She's got it again. She's got it again. (laughs) What is going on here? I'm sorry, Bianca, for getting so excited. Oh, my God. I hope you win the the Kia Sportage. Oh, Bianca. Thank you for playing. Tom's going to sort you out with some Fitzy and Whipper uh, toilet paper as well. Oh, Um, wow. What a win. Yeah, just to dry your eyes with that. (laughs) This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Talk in Paris, guys. Let's chat Olympics. Of course, we've had a gold medal in the pool this morning, which was very exciting with Molly O'Callaghan and Ariane Titmus. She got the silver, which was awesome to see the girls racing against each other. I want to talk about Harry Garside. You might have seen this last night. He is a boxer. He's a featherweight boxer. And you would have seen him. He's been on, what, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of we Here. Did, yes, we did see him in the jungle. And <laughs> I don't know. I think he did dancing. I think it was just the jungle. Yeah, that aside, he is a really, really impressive guy. I've met him before and he's extremely intelligent and interesting to talk to. So he took to the ring last night. What was great in the lead up which was they showed his dedication to the sport and also his dedication to the Olympics and winning a gold medal. Like that is his dream. They showed footage of his bedroom when he was younger and he explained how in his family at the age of seven he realised that he was the smallest out of all of them so he went down to the boxing club, boxing ring and the, and the club there, the gym um, to learn to box. And ever since, that has been his dream to win a gold medal. So to see him lose last night was really emotional. And he spoke afterwards, and he spoke beautifully, but he was also extremely honest. So he said, you know, it's great. This is his words. It's crazy, mate. Two decades dedicated to one dream, and it's over just like that. He was shattered, the poor guy. He said, I feel pretty numb right now. But I feel the next um, uh, the next month or two will be quite challenging and quite hard. He says, I fear for my mind, it gets the better of me. I feel like I let a few people down, but what do you do? 
Now, to Harry and anybody else who's competing for Australia, to turn up and wear the green and gold is enough for everybody back home. Yeah. The outcome is irrelevant. You're representing and you're doing the best you can and you are the best we have. So we th- say thank you to any athlete that, that is there in Paris. He goes on to say, Australia is such a sporting nation and I'm so sorry. I feel like a failure right now and I don't even know what to say. The saddest line I think he said was, I'm sure there's going to be some dark times, mate. I need to prepare for that now. So I, I, it's a great reminder of the emotional level of not only what goes into this, but what the outcome might be. Yeah, and so the, 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 the expectation, the pressure of the expectation yeah. is enormous because we can get carried away with the photographs of people holding gold medals yep. and the success and everybody w- want, we love We love winners, don't mm. we? Yeah, of course. Um, but I think what is so beautiful is that he was actually really honest. I don't know if he meant to be that honest. I think mm. that maybe in hindsight he might think, oh, you know, I wish I hadn't s- spoken so. No, it was powerful yeah. and it was real. Wasn't it? I, that's what I thought. He was truly himself in that moment. Well, it, it, it could be the spark of his career because he could have turned. Prof- he was offered to turn professional after mm. the last Olympics. So you have to be an amateur to fight in the Olympics. Then when you turn professional, you are out of the Olympics altogether, right? Yep. Yeah. So he waited four years to win this gold. He's knocked out in the first round. This could be the spark where he goes, he starts his professional career and he turns it all around. Yeah, I but- mean, you've got to... Failure is... You know, it's hard to explain to a kid. It really is because they don't understand. But no. failure can be so beneficial yep. in in turning that into success because you need to learn how to fail. It's like dating, Kate. You know what I mean? You huh? need to fail before you realise how beautiful somebody is. Do you saying that Kate quote still me, has me a one. shot at a gold medal romance? I. I, I think Kate I can't is about. Believe that no, we have turned to such a wonderful, well, I was, I was beautiful, let me just say this. heartfelt conversation about ha- Harry Garside and turning a failure into a life yeah. success well, into something so ridiculously trivial. To segue no, from failure to what Kate I'm Ritchie. saying okay, is what Harry saying? will now his boxing career will turn professional. And I think it's time for your dating career to turn professional too. Professional? Professional? What do you mean? Professional dating. Oh, thank God Only you're fans. playing that music, Lano. No. So tomorrow on the show, no. traffic dating. Kate <laughs> is back. If you would like to register, go to the Nova Player app. Oh, my God. Do you want to have a singles party? No. That's... Do you know what I do want to do is credit Harry Garside for being so honest. Thank you, Harry. Well and on, for Harry. the kids listening. No. Yeah, we love you, buddy. That you, yeah. Well it's done. A loss. A, you got to lose. You, sometimes you've got to lose. Well, that's. <laughs> I suppose um, that's the model of, motto of the show. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I had to go pick up a fridge. Right, it was a second-hand fridge. Yep, from this appliance store. Got it cheaper. Pretty happy with it. So awesome. I borrowed a mate's truck. To go get it. We okay. all need a friend yeah. with a truck. Thanks, Punners. Oh, yeah, no, Coops. Oh, it was Coops, Coops. Was it? And, yeah, and Coops. thanks, Coops, because he's pretty flat out with work, but yeah. he said you can have it for a couple of hours. Rock up to the place to pick it up, and I'm not joking, get it in there. It was it was boxed, right? It was in a box. They put it in a box, but it was just it was it would have been five centimetres too tall, and you can't lay down fridges, Kate, because it ruins fridges because oh, they've got really you, oh, you, can, no, you can't lay even, them down. You've I got know to have that. them standing up. Oh, even Kate okay. knows that. Even I, even I know that, and I'm a lady. What? So well, a woman so, anyway. So anyway, then they're like, "Well, we're going to have to take the box up. We're going to have to take off all the wrapping." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh." Then there's a guy, their delivery driver that they use all yeah. the time, goes, where are you going, mate? I said, I'm in Balmain. He goes, well, I just live not far from there. And he goes, I can drop it off there for a couple of hundred bucks. And I said, great, that would be great. If you could do that, that's perfect. Then I can drop this back to my mate and you can deliver it to me and help, it, help me get it into the house. This guy does it. So I then, an hour later, um, he arrives at the house 
And I, this guy's fascinating. He's in his mid 60s and he goes, oh, oh, okay, you're on this street. He goes, mate, I own the two houses down at the end. I've owned them for years. I'm going, you're kidding me. <sighs> he goes, yeah, I haven't lived in there, but they're investment properties for me. And I rent it out to the, the people that live in mm-hmm. it down there. Wow, he's done all right. Fat. He goes, mate, so how long have you been in the inner west for? I said, oh, we've been here for 13, 14 years. I, lo- I said, I love it around here. He said, yeah. He goes, mate, I could tell you a few stories about this place. <laughs> I go. grew Just, up around here. Just put my fridge in, mate, if you could. Just, then, yeah, just the fridge. No, yeah. but it, these were fascinating stories. He then continues to tell me stories about Lare- Louisa Road, Road in Birch yeah. Grove, which is the, the very expensive road in Birch Grove, and every house is on the water. He starts telling me stories about all these wealthy businessmen who are cheating on their wives. Okay? Oh. And I'm oh, getting well, sucked into... I hope none the... of the wives from Louisa Road are No. <laughs> the, the famous wives of Louisa Road... <laughs> He then tells me that he's got two investment properties on law. And I'm going, Ooh. mate, you're a delivery driver. I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. Mm. He goes, yeah, I blackmailed one because one of them, one of the wealthy businessmen, he hooked up with his sister-in-law. Ah. Right? And I'm going, okay, so he, he then, I got the sister to then bribe him to sell me his house so she wouldn't tell the whole oh, area what on. was going on. Oh, that's how he got into the market. So, so just ca- the fridge inside, mate. I, I went back inside. I said to BJ, God, this guy's got two places on our street. He's a fascinating guy, making me laugh, telling me all these stories. The next day, I go down the road, and the two houses that he was talking about, there's a guy at the front putting his bin. And I went, mate, I just met your landlord yesterday. He goes, what, my granddad? I go, no, 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 J- his name's Jim. Jim? He goes, no, 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 he doesn't own the house. My grandfather owns this house and I rent it off him. Oh, Jimbo. This, so then I, 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 I bring back the company that I've bought the fridge from, Kate, and I said, can you tell me more about Jim? Awesome. And they went, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> what what, what? <laughs> they, they, what did hear, he tell you? I could hear people laughing in the background. They said he is the best delivery driver in the area, but he is known to fabricate his stories. So you're the, telling me the real housewives of Louisa Road aren't cheating? But but he was so serious and he went into so much detail, awesome. Kate, about these stories. And they said he does it all the time. He just loves telling lies to people that he meets. <laughs> well, maybe and it's I- not about telling lies and it's more about he just loves a chat. And he might think that what he does on a day-to-day basis is isn't particularly interesting, so I'm going to create this magical world that I don't even know whether it's true or not. But does anymore. he get back? Does he get back to work and go, "Hey, God fits your beauty." Oh, yeah. He bought every word. You know <laughs> what? He'll talk about me on the radio. <laughs> oh, but I just couldn't believe it that he just kept telling me, fabricating all these stories. None of them are factual at all, He's and got... that's what he does his whole life. He told you the fridge was brand new, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and that he lived in the area, <laughs> and that you could lie the fridge down. <laughs> he also said, "No, I didn't damage it as I was installed." <laughs> I promise I didn't, and I own your house. Good on you, Jim. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. When have you travelled overseas, right? And you, this could be a, it could be a fast food restaurant, and you've ordered something, and it's not the same as we get back here in Australia. Yeah. And you were just hoping. I mean, but why you can't do you get... travel well, if you're not if you're not trying something new? But you would have been expecting it to be. I mean, there's consistency when you take a food chain like McDonald's, right? Oh, yeah, I know yeah. that if I get a Big Mac here, it's going to be pretty similar to the Big Mac over there. Yeah, the fillet of fish you would think would be changing in every single country around the world. And, and the fish. This is what I want to. This is what I want to tackle this morning is the fish. Right. Okay. Because this is. <laughs> This is a horror story. <laughs> um, and you know what? I, I, I agree with you, Kate. Go and try new delicacies wherever you are. Try the culture. Get mm. involved. Have the street food in Bali. Absolutely. You know? If Have you're from England, you don't need an English breakfast every morning. Go and try something new. This guy's over in India, right? Mm. He's a Brit, and he's decided to go to a local restaurant. And the Indian food's not sitting well with him, so he's had a look and at a street-side restaurant and said, you know what? I will try your fish and chips. We love fish and chips back home. I'm going to put up on the screen now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it looks like someone has um, dropped a series of number twos. About six so, people have done that. About six people. Six nugs. 
Um, so, so the chips are fine, aren't they? they the look chips good. are fine. Yeah, yeah, I quite like that size chips. I'm not a skinny fries girl. Sure. Or a big thick wedge. I like that size of a yeah, hot good chip. size chip. It actually looks like brownies. It looks like six brownies, doesn't it? Oh my god! It that, looks that like <laughs> rhymes with purred. Turd. <laughs> yeah, I think we've established it looks like six yeah. people of. Um, they're feeling a lot lighter this morning. That's um, <laughs> some of the comments are. It looks like the bait, not the fish. Mm-hmm. Someone else wrote, "Just because you caught it floating in the river doesn't oh. necessarily make it a fish." <laughs> You reckon it's a Bondi cigar? It looks more like a, cro- a croquette or something. Doesn't it? Or a, it's, a cro- it's a fish croquette, I think. Surely, because that, that is not a fillet of fish. You could not <laughs> eat that. Someone else said, that's the elusive snapper cable fish. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough to catch. <laughs> this is my favourite. That's not fish. That's eel, brother. Oh, <laughs> my. There it is. <laughs> Fitz in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.